What's up, Parmaniacs? Parastasis here. We are back in the world of FTB Unleashed. And um, German and Meaty gave me a nice little present. You can see right here. I got some force armor. Uh, you'll notice every single one of these has a speed enchant on it. And then it's got some rather ridiculous stats. And uh, this armor is insane. Um, watch this. This is ridiculous. Look at this shit. I mean, I'm just... I'm absolutely hauling ass. So it, it, it's gonna be rather rough to go back to normal. The other thing that really, really sucks is um, unlike like some of the Thomcraft boots, it doesn't go over one block. So it does make climbing and, and whatnot a little rough. Somebody pointed out that I've smashed some weed, but it does appear the weed is okay, my friends. Oh, sorry about that. Whoa! Hey buddy, how you doing? How you doing, buddy? All right. Now, we do have our, our little crappy clockwork engines, which we won't have for much longer. Some of the folks in the live stream don't like me using these engines because they suck, but they're also very, very, very cheap. And for what they cost, they are amazing. So, keep that in mind. Now, what we're doing today, you'll notice our little hammer down here is kind of broken. I am going to eventually replace this hammer, but uh, for right now, we kind of got to make do with it. And you'll notice we've created an infinite water supply here. Uh, our little farm down here, you'll notice we've kind of changed it up out of barley a little bit. That's because we were using some wheat. So what we've done, or what we're going to do, that's going to make some mossy stone. And we need nine mossy stone to get our hammer fixing itself. So let's go ahead and drain two more water. There we go. And unfortunately, there's no real easy way to do this. I guess if I had nine buckets, it would work a little bit faster. But I kind of don't want to waste the... Uh, there we go. I don't want to waste the, uh, the iron on it when this doesn't take too terribly long. And I think I'm about to get hit. Yep. What's up, buddy? Stupid zombie. Alright, there we go. And bam, bam. We're getting close to done. Alright, so one more cycle and we'll be finished. There we go. Now there are other ways to make mossy stone that I was unaware of. Uh, you can do it with an aqueous accumulator and a liquid transposer if you want. Just dump it straight into cobblestone, but I don't really need those machines quite yet. I will very soon, but don't need them quite yet. So I chose to go the more natural method. There we go. There's a bottle of moss. And I think we're actually out of slots on this, if I recall. No, I do have one more modifier slot. Perfect. So you can see the moss. All right, so I've picked that up there. Now it's nighttime, so unfortunately the durability is not really going to go up much. Let's see. If we put the durability in there, you can see it's 99. So if I stand over here for a couple minutes, it should slowly start repairing itself. I think. It may only do it during daytime. I've heard some conflicting report uh, reports. Some people say it works during day. Some people say it works whenever. Um, I don't know. We'll test it out here in a minute. So now that we've got some stuff, we need, we need to get rid of this cobble real quick. As I almost kill myself. Let me dump some of this cobble real fast. There we go. Now, once I get enough aluminum, which is the main holdup right now, we are going to redo our hammer into a uh, alumite hammer. That's uh, aluminum, uh, obsidian, and I think iron. I think that's it. Is that what aluminite's made of? Yeah, aluminum, iron, and obsidian. So aluminum's the main catalyst, and you need a lot of that stuff. So we, we just simply don't have enough of it yet to, to really utilize. Um, let's see, did that thing even repair in that time that we were out there? Yeah, there we go, see? 
it uh re it repaired eight points out of 1100 <laughs> so i mean i may have to go sunbathing when the sun comes up just to get our hammer to repair itself um and, and the other bad thing about this is just the sheer amount of cobblestone and other things that I've torn to pieces with this hammer kind of kind of lends to, to some pretty quick durability loss. I did find something else interesting. It seems if you get pushed by water that for some reason you seem to chop through the cobblestone a little bit quicker. So I kind of made my... Uh, I accidentally hit a water vein and I chewed through like a whole 10 block wall in like 8 seconds. It was kind of creepy. So I'm not sure if that was just a bug, if it was lag on the server side or what, but either way, I'm not going to complain. All right, so one of the things we need to start working on now, uh, we need to move a little bit further along in the uh, thermal expansion line. Specifically, we want to get liquid ducts, and we're going to need hardened glass to do that, and we need an induction smelter to get to that. So for an induction smelter, not to be confused with an induction furnace. We need this setup and specifically the Envar ingots. They're a little nasty. You can see we can get the Envar blend by doing iron dust and ferrous metal. So we've got ferrous ingots here. We've got some iron ingots here. And if I, this may not work. We can try it. I don't think it's gonna work. Yeah, if you have an induction smelter, that will work, but apparently it won't work with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put dirt in here to block this. Oh no, it actually will, whoa. What's it making out of dirt? Dry dirt, oh, well that's just amazing. All right, all right buddy, you wanna be smart with me? Do something with a bucket. Do something with a bucket, yeah. Yeah, what's up now? All right, so we're gonna put, uh, we need at least two Envar ingots. So we're gonna need four iron. And then we're gonna need one pulverized, or two pulverized ingots. So put these, bam, bam. There we go, there's our pulverized iron. And our ferrous metal. So now we come back over here we split these, slap that there. Now we've got six in bar blend. Okay, well we actually ended up with a little bit more than we needed. And we put these in here and that's gonna give us those. All right, so while that's functioning, let's go ahead and get our copper ingots and our redstone reception cell. So we need two copper ingots. Actually, I think we're gonna need four. Let's just grab them all. That'll make it easier on us. Uh, I'm gonna need a couple gold. And I think that's it for the moment. Where's our redstone? There we go. All right, so there we go. We've got our little cell thing. I think the other one requires glass, if I recall correctly. Yep, glass, iron, and gold. So I've already cooked some glass over here and I have plenty of iron on me, awesome. Put gold in the center. There we go. All right, so we got our copper. We need a bucket, which I've already got. And then we've got our Envar ingots, which should now be happily in here. Come over here, right click, come on. And we now have our induction smelter. Now the nice thing about this is in the future, if I need, and what we're gonna do here Let's see, what'll be the easiest way to do this? I'm just gonna set this right there. And then, where's my wrench? Not quite sure I'm gonna be able to actually hit this from here. Oh, that sucks. All right, fair enough. There we go. I will fix this here eventually, but not right now. Uh, the nice thing is the next time I need Envar, instead of having to convert it into dusts, I can just come over here and I should be able to put two in there and one there. And you can see it'll smelt and give me three Envar ingots to begin with. I believe. Hopefully it's three. Yep. And there we go. 
So that'll save us from having to do that in the future, which is a nice little change. Uh, the other nice thing is if you have sand, you can put sand here and any mineral type here. And instead of having to go through the whole production process over here, it'll just spit out duplicated ingots, if I recall correctly. I may be off on that, but I'm, I'm fairly certain it works that way. Um, we could test it, except I've already cycled all of my usable ores, except for aluminum, which I don't believe duplicates anyways. All right, so now that we can make the glass we needed, where is it? I guess it'd be easier to just look up liquidux. Now that we can create hardened glass, we're going to need some pulverized obsidian and we need some lead ingots. Now, obsidian is one of the other kind of, at least early on, it's kind of nasty to get. We've got two of those there, and we've got 12 of them there. We've got plenty of minium stones, or shards of minium. But we actually need the stone itself, which is right here. So the inert stone is just iron, gold, and smooth stone. So let's come over here. Let's put four of these in here. We'll let that cook. And while that's doing that, uh, we've got plenty of glass, so that's going to be fine. I think we're good on everything else. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a good thing to keep your excess shards of minium around. Uh, as the, the time goes on, your minium stone's durability is going to go down, and it's always nice to have you know, more than one around. And it's, it's just a very useful item. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with it. You can transmute a whole lot of things. Granted, it's nowhere near as overpowered as uh, Equivalent Exchange 2 was back in the day. Rest in peace. I think we all kind of missed that mod a little bit. I don't know. It's one of those mods that, like, you miss, but at the same time, you know, you're, you're kind of glad it's gone because the, the balance on that mod was just completely ridiculous. But at the same time, you know, it was always kind of fun to just slowly work your way up till you were just absolutely insane, spitting out, like, 12 million diamonds a second for shits and giggles. But, you know, then at the same time, it kind of broke everything else, and everyone was using EE3. All right, so we're going to use our little woodcutter, or our lumber axe, that Media was so nice to give us. You can see we just mined basically all of that stuff here. Or chopped, sorry. There's that one person who's like, you didn't actually mine it, Pyro. That was a, that was a chopping mechanism. All right, so we've got plenty of wood now. Actually, we had plenty of wood before we went over there. I just didn't see it. Sorry. And we pull up our minium stone, put the minium stone in here. And if I recall, the recipe is like that. Yep. And now we have 24 obsidian. Obsidian is no longer an issue. We can easily get obsidian. We can do that pretty much all day long with a simple farm. Now all we need is lead. Thankfully, we happen to have tons of lead. And we just come over here, charge up our little engine. Give it a little bit more juice. There we go, we're red. And there we go. Oh, it wants the obsidian powder, doesn't it? Yes, yes it does. All right, so while we're waiting on that to do its thing, we're gonna come back over here, pulverizer, we need to pass to the back of the machine now instead of the front. There we go. We'll put this right there. And we'll switch back. Oh, no, 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 not to the back of the machine. Damn it. Well, it's just gonna sit there. I forgot we have it up, up in the air, not down low. Get a little bit more of this out before we cycle it. There we go. Why didn't it come out when I shift clicked it? All right, where are you? Did I not pick it up or did it? Oh, it went into my went into my bag. There we go. And that's gonna give us the hardened glass. There we are. And the hardened glass we can use to make liquiducts. We can make it use it to make uh, tesseracts. 
We can use it to make redstone energy cells, portable tanks, pretty much everything that's inside of um, thermal expansion. But for now, we're going to use it for liquiducts. We need copper ingots, which we thankfully have a decent supply of. So we put this here. Let's put some over there. That gives us eight. I'm going to go ahead and make a few more. Now, the reason I'm making so many of these, um, it is one of those materials that we're going to be using quite frequently. Uh, I am going to be using lava engines to basically run everything. There we go. So it'll be nice to have a decent amount of these guys around. Keeps, uh, keeps me from having to use buildcraft pipes. Now, there's nothing wrong with buildcraft pipes, if that's your thing. Definitely use those. I just, I don't like having to go and deal with the... Uh, the cactuses and and all of that stuff I mean like I said you know to each his own some people like it some people don't for me I'm just I'm just not that big of a fan of build craft pipes so I'm gonna keep letting this uh, go ahead and grind on up because we're gonna use that extensively for pretty much the rest of the time that we're playing the game and we're gonna need a ton I mean we may not need as many liquid ducts but we are gonna need quite a few of some of the other materials um, Specifically, we're going to need, uh, you know, tons of stuff for the redstone conduits for our power system. We're going to need a uh, tesseract so that we can easily transport everything from the nether, etc., etc. And uh, just just quite a few things. Now, to get tesseracts are the big holdup because you need ender eyes and ender eyes can be difficult to get. However, we do have, thankfully... Um, equivalent exchange installed so ender eyes are pretty easy to get and as you can see we've got plenty of iron cycle that out that gives us a stack so we're going to go ahead and put this here split this and now we have 16 ender pearls i said ender eyes i meant ender pearls with ender pearls uh, we put that into another thermal expansion machine and we'll easily have uh molten end you use that to pour over the tesseract frame and get that set up so if i remember my machines correctly it's not the liquid transposer i think it's the magma crucible yeah that's what we need so we need this right here unfortunately i think i just burned through all of my copper unless we have some copper i have some copper ore berries and we have one more copper ingot now i think ore berries if i recall are only going to give us one ingot for nine. We put those in here. I think each of these gives us a nugget, and a nugget goes into... Yeah. And that's going to give us nine. So let's head on down here real quick. We're going to need to do some more of these. Now, granted, I could go and mine some copper. And actually, I think this is copper... Copper gravel ore. Uh, the main issue... Oh, it's locked. Oh, that's cool. You can change the, the way it works. That's kind of cool. Um, I could go and mine it, but we don't have big dig or configs right now, and mining is painfully slow, especially since our little... Uh, ow, ow, ow. Man, you got to be careful with ore berry bushes, especially when you're wearing force armor, which makes you haul ass. They're like cactuses, except with less of a sense of humor. And the real bummer is when you're walking through here shift clicking, you can't actually mine anything. It kind of sucks. All right, there we go. And if you guys may be asking why it's so dark in here, or berry bushes require darkness. All right. How much do we get? Uh, 14 copper. That'll get us almost another ingot. So not a lot. I strongly recommend for those of you guys who hate mining, that you stack up all the ore berry bushes that you find. Don't throw them away. Don't leave them around. Because you'll definitely be needing them as the game goes forward. Well, I mean, I guess you won't once you get a quarry and whatnot. But, you know, if you get a nice ore berry bush farm and you lay it out a little bit better than ours is, you can really do some, uh, some hardcore mining without having to actually go down into the tunnels and do it yourself. Unless, of course, that's your thing. In which case, rock on. All right, so that gives us two ingots now. I think that'll be enough to make what we need to make. 
There we go. Yeah, that's gold, which is easy. Oh, nether bricks. I totally forgot about nether bricks. Yeah, we're gonna have to go get some of those real quick. Is the hammer repaired enough to do that yet? Well, our hammer is a little beat up, but that's fine. We can make it work. Come on. We're like 10 blocks away. Okay, we're, we're five blocks away. One, two, three, four, five, six blocks away, give or take, depending on how you count from there. And it's still, it's still triggering for us. Stupid, stupid game. All right, thankfully, Median German had one. Where, where did they do with the nether portal? They had another portal right here. Oh, it's underneath. Okay. I was about to be mad. I was like, dude, it was totally here. I was going to be flipping my shit if I couldn't find it. Alright. Ooh, hi, piggies. Whoa! God, this stuff my... Oh, 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 oh. Hi, pig. Don't be mad. I just need a little bit of this stuff that you don't care about. Not much. Not much. Alright, that's what? 46? 46 should be plenty. Yeah. Alright, let's get out of here. So that's not so bad. It can be it can be a pain in the ass if uh, you don't have obsidian set up. You don't have other people playing on your server that have been nice enough to get it, but with the minium stone you can pretty much make one pretty easy. Although if you got Greg Tech installed, you're pretty much screwed, because you actually have to start a small forest fire to get that thing working. And that's not easy. Not easy at all, as I demonstrated in the uh, my brief time in the Unleashed series. Alright. So we're going to start converting that into bricks. Come on. I'm going to switch this engine back up. Because we want to go ahead and front load this here. Now, even though you're not processing stuff, the nice thing about thermal expansion, one of the amazing things is they have their own... Oh, I guess it's already got storage in it. They've got their own storage. So you can actually front load the system to where it'll automatically save up quite a bit of power. So it makes it nice. And like I said, these clockwork engines, they are annoying because you have to constantly click them, but they're absolutely amazing when it comes to power output. They are a very, very cheap source of, of decent power. I think they do four MJs a tick. I may be off on that. Somebody will know. One of the forestry lore bunnies will correct me if I'm if I'm off. But uh, they, they are by far one of the cheapest ways to quickly and easily make MJs early on, in my opinion. There's probably a million different ways to go about doing it, and other people will have their opinions on the best way to start off. But for me, that works out perfectly. All right. That's going to give us the two nether bricks that we need. And we need a bucket, we need a machine frame, which we've already made several of. Do I have any more gold blocks? Please tell me I have some gold. There we go. And we got plenty of glass. All right, glass, gold, iron. There we go. And we, oh, is that not copper? No, that's copper. So what am I missing? I have the bucket. Surely I'm missing something. Usually doesn't mess with me unless... Oh, I forgot to make the... Uh... That's why. It's like, what the hell's going on here? Let's get some more gold out of here. And now it should auto-complete for us. There we go. Now you want to be careful with this machine. Uh, this machine is very expensive uh, power-wise. Uh, the reason why is you can actually make lava with this one, if I believe right, if I'm correct. Yeah. 
I can actually put netherrack in here or cobblestone or smooth stone and it will turn this into lava. So it's one of the more expensive machines to run and do what you need to do. So you'll definitely want to charge it up in advance. Make sure that you've got, I think it can hold, I think like 100,000 or 80,000 MJs. Let's see, 40,000 MJs, which compared to 4,800 and uh, 2,400 is a hell of a lot more MJs. So you may want to actually move several of your engines over to fuel this thing. Otherwise you may be here all day now we've got plenty of hardened glass now, which we'll be able to use to make our tesseracts and some of the other stuff. So while that is charging up, and in fact we're going to go ahead and break... Do I have like a normal pickaxe so I don't have to dig everything out? That's the only problem with this hammer, as awesome as it is. There we go. Sometimes you just want to break one block. Just one block. There we go this to charge up as well there we go come on now you know the nice thing about these engines is they don't require fuel all right so we got 3k in there all right so one of the other things we need before we can set up our new power system is a pump and it's pretty easy to make. We need an iron gear, an iron pickaxe, some iron. Just a hell of a lot of iron. So let's start off by making the gear. Do I have enough iron for this? It's probably going to be pretty close, but I, I think we've got enough. If not, we can go mine some more. Alright, so we've got our wooden gear. We've got our stone gear. We now have our iron gear. Now have our iron pickaxe, and then what am I missing? One piece of redstone. There we go. What am I missing? Iron gear, iron pickaxe, iron ingots, redstone. What? Okay, I guess I'll just put it together manually then. If you want to be uncooperative. Alright, so we've got the mining well now. We just need the tank of glass on top. There we go. Now I may use these tanks to store temporarily, but I won't be using them to store long term. Uh, the nice thing about those tanks is they're very, very quick. Uh, they're cheap. You just need a lot of sand, which is, as you can see from down here on the beach, pretty easy to find in large amounts on just about any map, unless you get really unlucky and you're landlocked, which I've, I've really never seen. Usually the problem I have is too much water, not too little water, but I guess it could happen. Either way, um, it, it's fairly cheap to make. They don't hold a whole lot, but they'll, they'll get you started. Uh, you can also make the portable tanks with thermal expansion. They'll hold eight buckets as opposed to, I think the other ones will hold two to four. But they're awfully expensive as you got to use a lot of hardened glass. Whether that's expensive to you or not, you kind of got to make your own choice. I don't know. Now, we're actually in the daylight. I'm curious to see if our little hammer is going to repair quicker now that we're out in the sunlight. It's actually managed to grow a little bit. When we first started this video, we were at, I think it was 99. Yep, you can see it's, it's actually repairing a little bit at a time now. You can see the text is flashing constantly. I'm assuming that's because it keeps repairing and cycling up. So, just standing out here in the sunlight should make it make it run a little bit faster. Like I said, we started at 99. We're now up to 186. So we've, we've basically doubled the durability. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and slap our ender pearls in here so these can start cooking. That's gonna take a while because they're awfully expensive. And then in the next episode, we're actually gonna make two tesseracts. Well, actually, I think we need 
we're going to technically need four tesseracts two liquid two energy one to send energy there and one to take it back or one to send energy from there to here one to send liquids from there to here so once we've got that rolling um we'll pick up there so hopefully you guys are liking this series if you do please slap that like button make sure you subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next clip